Ryan Reinhardt, and you're watching Chatting with Stacks. I want to talk to you about this tragedy that you recently witnessed. Oh, shit. Yeah, the, the woman on the golf cart. Do you want to yeah, explain man. to me what exactly happened that day? Like, I, uh, yeah, it is most, is uh, one of the most, you know, tragic things that I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of shit, man, and uh, blood and all that, but this was different. Um, th this lady, I was fishing down at the ocean. I parked my car in this hotel parking lot. When? And, uh, it was about a year ago now. And, uh, I, I, I got done fishing. It was about six o'clock at night. I just had hernia surgery about a couple of weeks before that. So I was moving slow. And um, in fact, I still have my waistband on me that after they give it to you after your surgery. But uh, man, I'm, I'm walking and I see this golf cart coming at a pretty high rate of speed the wrong way as I'm going to my car. And I kind of moved out of the way and there's a woman, her hair was black. She was smiling in the wind. They were having a good time, you know, they were just going and the guy was driving and he takes this left-hand turn, not crazy reckless, but kind of fast, probably more fast than you should be going in a golf cart, uh, especially if you don't have seat belts on. He, he turned and this woman, I watched everything, bro. I watched the life go out of her. Um, she tried to reach for the for the bar of the, of the golf cart, and it, she missed it by like that much. I watched her fingertips try to ring onto it, and as she flew out of that golf cart backwards, like a gust of wind sucked her out of there, and she went right by me, right you know by me about, and I was up on the hill, and she went right there, and she smacked her head, man, on the concrete. And it died instantly. I mean, her eyes became fixated up in the sky, blood, nose, mouth. I mean, the head. Ah, it's grow. It's crazy, man. But you know, exploded. And uh, I, I, I dropped my pole and I went over there, run over there, and uh, I start calling nine one one. I go down to my knees, and you know, just out of instinct, I knew she was dead. I just started doing the CPR, man. I lifted her neck back so she get some air. Anyway, I started doing the CPR. It was brutal, man, because every, you know, every other, you know, compression I did, you know, blood from her mouth and her eyes had squirted my face, man. And, and uh, I kept going. 911 was on the phone. Uh, they kept uh, telling me to keep going. And uh, the guy, he gets out of the car. He comes over and he goes, what happened? I go, she's dead dude what do you mean and i you know and he gets back in the cart and takes off and so i'm by this time people are coming and uh i, I scream get his plates and some witnesses you know of course he was hiding beer you know he was hiding alcohol well he took off well the helicopter came down and all that and uh he left you know they she was dead <laughs> and uh he come back and he didn't even get a he didn't even get a breathalyzer or, or, or anything you know well you know i don't know i, I just uh he took off man and that when you do that that's some coward stuff man right there but um yeah so he just got like a ticket and you know it was never in the paper or anything it was uh, kind of hush tush how old was the woman 52 years old she was uh she was just down here visiting with her friends had a hotel and just at the beach having a good old time you know they were celebrating her. They found out who I was, so I met the family and all that. And uh, they they don't they, they're uh, they're away, far away from here. But uh, yeah, man, it was it was insane. And then I I uh, go back to my house and I, I was still tripping on. I'm like, how did that happen? So I went back up there, and I told that cop before before I left. I said, hey man, can you have somebody clean that blood? and all that stuff with her shoes right there. Her shoes were in the middle of it. And uh, he's like, yeah, we, I got it, man. I got it. Anyway, so I uh, I went to, back to the house and come back about three hours later and everything, nothing had been changed. To this day, I still have her shoes in my trunk of my car. Wow. Just didn't seem right to leave her shoes there, man, if her family would have came to see that, man. You know what I mean? Wow, man. That's kind of how I uh, viewed it. 
it's commendable for you to try even though you knew like there's no there's nothing you can do like you know yeah i didn't think uh i learned a lot about myself that day man i, I uh yeah i sure did it's uh it was it was crazy man and then uh two months after that i'm in this restaurant and uh the owner asked me she said her her uh, employee has uh, been in there for you know 40 minutes so i go up to the door and i'm knocking on the door you know yell you know yelling i asked her her name she told me i'm yelling for her name and nothing so i we, we smashed open the door and uh she's laying there right dead with a needle in her arm with the drugs on the damn uh toilet and all that so i i was calm man i i, I don't know it was like that other i had another deal uh, i wasn't that calm but this time i was calm and i just said i got this and put the girl over my thigh put her neck over my thigh she was purple man and uh they had 911 on the phone and i found myself again giving chest compressions this time i did mouth to mouth i couldn't the other time it was too much blood but the cop said i shouldn't have done the mouth to mouth she could have had fentanyl in there or something but i did and uh you know man by the grace of god you know i don't like to say i brought her back i did get her back going and then they came in i mean she was she was doing good you know i, I did get her going and uh, then they come in and uh gave her some narcan so i like to say both of us saved her life you know the the paranormal it's crazy the drug epidemic is getting yeah man getting crazy out there man hey man if people want to party and have a good time cool that i think people should people that can control it you know and not control them they should have a good time but man i i just know i can't man you know i can't either man there's not enough alcohol in the world for me <laughs> you know? alcohol was never my thing sure i drank when i'd go out to the clubs and bars but i never drank at home or anything like that but uh alcohol wasn't my thing but I'm scared to drink today because it could turn into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, alcohol and drugs for me, man. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. It was both. Yeah. So I want to switch it up a little bit, man, and lighten the mood a little bit. Hey, I hope I wasn't too bad to talk. Like I kind of went no, into detail. Not at all, bro. Not at all. I might yeah. beep a couple words here and there, but it's all good. Oh, I want to. I want to lighten the mood a little bit, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to tell me the story on how you gave your parents. Oh crap. shit, man! That one. Oh <laughs> god damn! Oh god damn! Oh, I'm sorry, Mister uh, Mister Reiner. I'm, I apologize in advance. Oh god, just hey, man. They got in the laundry, man. They uh, now this was years back, right? When I come home from college, where'd you get them, bro? Where'd you get them? St. Louis, <laughs> Missouri. They must have an infestation. Me and my buddy both got them that night. And uh, we, you know, we're, hey, man, we're we're college kids. We we went home with two girls and both ended up with the crabs. <laughs> hey, it happens, bro. Oh yeah, and so. Uh, that was a one and done for me man <laughs> the, you know anyway i came home that weekend and i did my laundry and then the next week my dad calls me he says hey you little fucker he goes i want to tell you something me and your mother got the goddamn crabs and i know i ain't cheating on her she ain't cheating on me and they had to come from you because i told him i got them you know and so, so i gave them to him man and uh it was uh yeah it was a pretty wild it's <laughs> nuts dude oh so, when i heard mm -hmm. you tell that story on that, <laughs> on, that on that clip i swear i almost pissed okay, my face so, bro. oh that was that was years ago in my in my heyday <laughs> yeah man i'm gonna put a clip i'm gonna incorporate a clip somewhere around <laughs> here so. i gave my parents a crown <laughs> <laughs> I heard this one. No, no, no. So, so, so. Oh, God. I'm so glad. 